What's up guys, today we're going to be looking at some very impressive new photography software. We're going to be using Luminar Neo, which we've done in the past, but today we're specifically going to be looking at these new extensions that you can choose to purchase. They're like add-ons that do very specific things to your photographs. Most of them are very impressive, but there is one specifically that creates hilariously bad results. Let's check it out. <laughs> like, who is this? That's my son. And this is like some weird cartoon, creepy version of my son. So when you open up Luminar Neo now, you'll see there's this extras button up here and you can purchase these different extensions. We're just gonna be looking at a few of them today. The first one being focus stacking. And you want to focus stack an image when you want the entire image to be sharp, but maybe you have something very close in the foreground and very far in the distance. And even if you stop down to F22, you're still gonna see that shallow depth of field. So what you can do is you can take multiple images with different focal points in every single image and then use Using software like this, you can just throw it in the program and it will find the sharp part of every image and stack it for you. This image here is an image that Elia Licardi took for the next Photographing the World. We did it in Japan. We've been working our butts off for months on this tutorial, but it's almost done. And in this image, you can see he focused on the temple in the background. And then on the second image here, he focused on the trees in the foreground. All I have to do is hold shift and click on both of these images and drag it over to focus stacking. If you click the cog here, it will give you a few different options. We have auto alignment, and then we have chromatic aberration reduction. I don't think we have chromatic aberration, but I'm gonna go ahead and click it. And then we can just click stack here. And here it is. We've got a sharp temple and the sharp trees in the foreground as well. And we can zoom in here to 100%. We can see that we've got the perfect temple here. And we've also got perfect trees as well. And remember, these trees were moving in the wind, and I don't see any ghosting at all. It seems to have done a perfect stack. Now, keep in mind, this was a super simple stack with just two images, but the software can handle up to 100 images. And some macro photographers might actually need that. If they're shooting like an ant or something and they want the entire thing to be in focus, you might have to take a ton of different photos to do it, and the software can handle it. Next up, HDR Merge. Now, as you guys may or may not know, I've done tons of stuff with real estate photography in the past. We filmed an entire series called Where Art Meets Architecture with Mike Kelly. He's an amazing architectural photographer. If you're shooting high-end jobs, you want to get it right on location, and then you want to come back to a program like Photoshop, and you want to mask out every window perfectly and, and get every shot to be absolutely perfect. But I also used to be a very low-end architectural photographer years ago, and I got paid $200 to shoot an entire house. And so in that case, I don't have time to spend an hour on every single shot. I got to get this done as quickly as possible. And this can do a pretty impressive job here. So I've taken two photographs, one where the room is properly exposed and one where the outside is properly exposed. Now, let me just show you what happens. If we tried to take this image and we try to edit it and I come down to develop and we just bring all the shadows all the way up and we start boosting the exposure and then I start pulling the highlights back down. You can just see, there's no way you're going to get a, a normal looking image like this at all. So what I can do is once again, hold shift and click on both of these images and drag them up to HDR merge. If you click on the cog, it's just gonna give you a couple of different options here. For ghost reduction, it just says use it if there's going to be moving objects in the scene, which I do not have. So I'm going to click merge and let's see what it comes up with. And here is the final shot. And if we zoom in, let's zoom into like 50% here. I mean, that looks pretty good. If you start trying to like really push the shadows and the highlights to try to get a shot with one raw image, it never looks this good. And even if you could pull back all this info, it creates all this weird like hazy blooming and stuff. And I really am not seeing much of that. Maybe just right here but that's not bad at all. Now, like I said, if this was a high-end job, this is not deliverable, but if you're just trying to knock out images as quickly as possible while retaining the view, this is definitely an option. All right, next up, let's look at this photo of my son here. I think this is a great looking shot, but obviously my shutter speed was a little slow and uh, there's just motion blur here. Normally, I would just delete an image like this. However, 
One of the plugins claims to be able to fix this, so let's give it a try. I'm going to click on edit over here, and I'm going to click on super sharp. You can change how this works based on like a universally blurry image, like you missed focus, or you can set it to motion blur, which is the problem with this image where my shutter speed was too slow and you know I couldn't hold the camera steady. I'm just going to click low here and it's going to do its thing. And there we go, before, after, before, after, before, after. I mean, that's pretty wild. I'm going to click on middle here. That's going to do even more sharpening. Yeah, I feel like this is probably too much here. Before, after, before, after. Kind of added like a lot of weird contrast to the image. So low works for me. If you click this face enhancer button, it basically turns any people in your shot into a space alien. So let's click face enhancer here and see what it does to my poor son. <laughs> Like, who is this? Who is this? I do not know who this person is. That's my son. And this is like some weird cartoon, creepy version of my son. That is... <laughs> That's so weird. I don't understand what, what this tool is supposed to do. It's just supposed to make everybody <laughs> look like a cartoon or something. When I first saw this, I was like, okay, obviously it's like confused by <laughs> just this one image. I need to test it on another image. Here's, here's a shot of my son on a swing. This one's also kind of blurry. So let's, let's try it on this one. <clears throat> we'll click on super sharp face enhancer and we'll go motion blur and low. Again, it turns my son into like some cabbage patch kid or something. And then it, it, it's like, making this weird box around his shirt and, and sharpening just that, but leaving everything else. It is the weirdest thing ever. It's so creepy. All right, here, <laughs> you're gonna love this one. I, I was just looking for funny pictures uh, to do this to. So here's a shot of me and my son. We'll go to edit. We will go to super sharp, face enhancer, and low. I asked Luminar about this and they told me it was an experimental feature that will get better over time, but as of right now, just don't click that box. All right, for the next shot, I've got a stock photo image here. And if we click on edit, we can see something called magic light. Now, a lot of like landscape or cityscape photographers, they're always talking about uh, how the, the starburst effect is rendered with different lenses and at different f-stops and everything like that. And so some photographers love it and some photographers hate it. Some photographers want to have this starburst effect, but then they don't want to have to shoot at whatever f-stop creates the best starburst. So they're, they're like making fake starbursts when they get back onto the computer or whatever. Magic light basically does it for you automatically. So we can click this and we can turn up the intensity. And as you can see, it automatically finds all of the lights for you, which is pretty cool. And it creates these starbursts. And then you have the option to change the starbursts and the size and the widths and like the beam angle and you know the rotation and everything. So it makes it a super easy process. Now you may have noticed that it picked up uh, one of the windows. I thought it was a light up here and you may be wondering, well, can you fix that? And the answer is yes. You can click on masking right here and then brush. And then you can just paint exactly what you want to have or you can click on erase and you can remove certain lights that you don't wanna have the effect. And so it makes uh, fine tuning this very easy. Finally, we're going to be looking at background removal. I'll go back to this shot that we already edited of my son here and I will click on edit and then layer properties, masking, and you'll see here background removal. It's already done here. It's done a great job of cutting my son out. And if I click remove, it's going to cut him out and we'll have a transparent background. Now at this point you can add different layers if you want to, so I could click here. And for example, if I wanted to grab an image and put it right in here behind them, I could make it larger. I can change the order of the background to move it behind. And then of course, to make it look realistic, I have to change the color and everything. So I can turn, tone that down a little bit. Saturation comes down a lot, come to Nolan's layer, go back to develop, you know, warm it up just a little bit, maybe add a little bit of saturation to him, you know, something like that. 
But check this out. If I go back over to catalog here, I've got this other image that I was playing with. This is just another stock image here. So on this image, I'll click on background removal. You can see it automatically picked her out. It's done a really good job of that, but it also gives me the option to select other parts of the scene that it, I guess, uses AI to figure out. So I could click on man-made ground and it's gonna grab the road. I could click on natural ground and it's just gonna grab the ground before it becomes the trees. I could click on flora and it's gonna grab all the trees. And obviously it's not doing a perfect job, but it is getting you close and then it allows you to fine tune it. So you'll see if I turn this off and I just wanna select her and I click remove, I'm sure I'm going to be able to find a few different errors on her. So I can zoom in to 100% here, maybe 200%. And you'll see like right here, it didn't get this part. So I can click on refinements brush here and I can choose the transition. I can choose the object or I can choose the background. So maybe I just wanna click transition right here and I just want to say right there. So now it's cut that out. And if I wanted to be even more precise, I could paint it myself under the layers property here. You can see I can choose paint or erase and I'm just gonna zoom into this little spot in her hand and I'm just gonna paint this out. And there we go. Now let's talk about noise reduction. Let's say you happen to underexpose an image by like four stops, and the only way for you to fix it is to go to the develop panel and just push up that exposure. When you zoom in here to 200%, check out the noise this creates looks pretty bad. But one of the new plugins is called Noiseless here, and it gives you advice on which option to use. I'm just going to click low here and let it do its thing. And that is pretty impressive. Check it out, before, after, before, after. Now, as you guys know, if you, if you go a little too heavy handed with noise reduction, it starts killing your detail. This has done a really good job of retaining most of that detail while getting rid of a lot of the noise. Let's just see what middle looks like here. All right, I think that's a little too far. Again, we're starting to get that like smudgy look where we're losing detail. Let's go up to high just to look at it. This is, this is looking pretty bad here, but low, I think that's done an amazing job of keeping that detail while getting rid of, you know, like 90% of the noise. Well guys, that wraps up this video. If you're interested in Luminar Neo, click on the link in the description, try it out 100% for free. And if you do decide to buy it, just remember that everything I've talked about today is an extension that you can choose to purchase separately.